Hey, thank you boys and girls, thank you parents for joining us for Dove Bible Club. We missed you so much, but we are so happy that you are joining us today. We have an awesome meeting in store for you. So here's what we need you to do. I need you to get up off the couch. I need you to get up out of your seat. I need you to go get your mom, go get your dad, go get your sister, go get your brother, and then call some of your friends and let them know Dove Bible Club is on. So the first thing I need you to do, I need you to move with me. Come on, go side to side. Come on, yeah. Come on, move with me. You are the Bible Club, yeah. Come on, you got it, you got it, you got it, you got it. Move, you got it, yeah. Okay, boys and girls, now it's time for our hula hoop contest. Did you get your hula hoop? Remember, I told you to tell mommy and daddy to buy your hula hoop. But if you don't have one, go ahead and contact us at DoveBibleClub.org and we will get you a hula hoop because I want to challenge you to a hula hoop contest. Here we go. Watch me. Watch me. Here we go. Go, Miss Dozier. Go, 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 Miss Dozier. Yeah, go, Miss Dozier. Yeah, go, 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 Miss Dozier. Yeah. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to get into our scriptures. Every meeting, we go over three scriptures. And the scriptures are Psalms 119, verse 11. Psalms 119, verse 105, and John 316. So you got those? Psalm 119, verse 11, Psalm 119, verse 105, and John 316. Good. So the first one, I'm going to give you a three count and we'll read it together. Are you ready? Let's go. One, two, Three and read. Your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Psalms 119, verse 11. Good job. Now, our next scripture is Psalm 119, verse 105. I'm going to give you a three count. Get ready. Get ready. One, two, three and read. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Psalm 119 verse 105, you're doing good. Now the next scripture is probably the best scripture in the whole Bible. It's John 3.16, and I bet some of you know John 3.16, but let's read it together. I'm going to give you a three count. Here we go. One, two, three, and read. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. John, what? 3, 16. Boys and girls, you all did so good in reading those scriptures. But remember, I want to challenge you to try to memorize those scriptures because we go over those same scriptures each month. Okay, now the last thing I want to teach you is the pledge to the Bible. That's our, and in the pledge to the Bible, it has two of the scriptures that we just went over. I have a Bible in my hand. And this is the full Bible. It has 66 books in here, and it has two sections. It has the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament has 39 books, and it talks about Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. And then the New Testament has 27 books, 
and it talks about Jesus came and he's coming back. And here's how you can remember this. Let's say this, this simple little song, the B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. Bible! You got to say it loud. Come on. The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God. The B-I-B-L-E. Bible! Listen to this. The Bible has 66 books. The Testaments, there are two. 39 books in the Old Testament and 27 in the New. God's word never fails. No, never fails. No, never fails. No, God's word never fails. No, 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 no. God's word satisfies. Yes, satisfies. Yes, satisfies. Yes, God's word satisfies. Yes, 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 yes. Good. <laughs> now, let's do the pledge to the Bible. I'm going to hold my Bible up. I need you to stand up. Stand up straight, boys and girls. Come on, stand up straight. We're not pledging to the flag. We're pledging to the Bible. All right, put your hand on your heart. Here we go. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its word in my heart that I might not sin against God. Yay! All right, boys and girls. Yes, yes. Don't you remember our last lesson where Jesus is alive? Jesus rose from the dead. Well, this week we are going to be talking about the great commission the great commission where jesus shares with us that we he commands us actually to go and share the good news the gospel share his death his burial and his resurrection with all the world that's what he tells us so our character trait for today is love say love 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 <laughs> and our scripture is coming from different ones let's go the great commission is found in matthew 28 verse 18 and 19. the great commission is also found in mark uh, verse chapter 16, verse 15. He met his disciples on this mount and with disciples, he was talking to them and this is where Jesus was giving them the command. Uh, go and tell everybody, tell the whole world, tell them that I love them. Jesus said, tell them that I died for them. Tell them that I paid the price for their sins. Tell them that God is not mad with them anymore. Go and tell them, tell the whole world that they can be saved, tell them. So as he's talking to his disciples, all of a sudden, the, the, he's on this mount talking to the disciples and then a cloud comes and Jesus begins to rise up. He begins to rise up. <laughs> a cloud takes him up, takes him up, takes him up, takes him up until he disappears in the clouds. And so the, 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 the disciples are looking up because Jesus was just talking to them. Now this cloud has lifted them up and Jesus disappears in the cloud. And they're still looking and wondering where he is. And all of a sudden, two angels come. They appear shining white and white and say, why are you men? Why are you gazing up there like that? Why are you looking up there? like that. That same Jesus that left that you saw go up, he's going to return one day. He's coming back one day. And so remember Jesus before he was lifted up into the clouds, before he ascended, he's going back to heaven to sit on the right hand side of God. And he was telling them before he ascended to heaven, he was telling his disciples, go and tell the world that I love them. Go and tell everybody. Go everywhere, everywhere and tell the world that Jesus 
loves them. And so that's what your commission is, and that's what my commission is. All of us have a responsibility to obey the commandment of Jesus, and that is to go and share the good news, the gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Let's tell your families, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, tell your neighbors, tell the grocery store owner, tell the cashiers, tell the people in the mall, wherever you go, tell your teachers, tell your classmates, tell your cousins, tell your grandma, tell them, tell them that Jesus loves them, that Jesus paid the price for their sin, that they can have eternal life. For the scripture says, in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That's John 3, 16. God did not come, Jesus didn't come to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. Jesus didn't come. God didn't come to do that and say, I got you. I, no, he came to say, you are loved. You are loved. Why don't you come and be a part of my family? Why don't you receive what my son Jesus Christ has done? He shed his holy, sinless blood for you and the entire world. Come today. Receive God today. Receive Jesus as your Savior today. That's the good news. And that's your commandment and my commandment. God bless you. Okay, boys and girls, the next part of our Dove a Bible Club meeting is called the Wordless Book. And in doing and going over the Wordless Book, it's five different colors. And those five colors tell you just how much God loves us and what he did. It shows us and tells us why God had to send Jesus Christ to earth to die, to die on the cross for our sins. But before we go over the Wordless Book, I want to tell you about the very beginning. See, when God created the world in the very beginning, he wanted a family so bad that he created Adam and Eve. And when he created Adam and Eve, he put them in this beautiful garden. It was called the Garden of Eden. And he told Adam, Adam, you can eat from any tree in this garden except this tree right here, which was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Guess what Adam did? Adam ate from the tree. Adam disobeyed God. And when Adam disobeyed God, sin entered the world. All of the evil stuff came in the world. All of the bad stuff, sickness and disease and just mean people. People wanted to do, wanted to do things, uh, whatever was in their heart to do instead of doing things God's way. And that's why God had to send Jesus Christ because he told Adam, when you eat from this tree, if you do that, you're gonna be separated from me. You're gonna die and you're gonna surely die, which means you're gonna die spiritually. You will have no more connection or fellowship with God and you're gonna die physically. But Adam still disobeyed God. And then when every, anybody that was born after Adam, they were born with the sinful nature as well. So they were automatically separated from God and couldn't communicate with God spiritually. That's why God had to send Jesus. So now here are the five colors. The first color is darkness. And the scripture says in Romans 3, 23, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All of us had this sinful nature to do wrong and not obey God. But God didn't want it to be that way. It happened because Adam sinned and disobeyed God. But God says the wages of sin is death, it's punishment, and somebody has to pay for that. 
But God loved us so much. He said, I don't want you to die. I don't want you to pay for it. I love you so much. I'm going to send my son, Jesus Christ, to pay the price for your sin. He's going to be your substitute. So the next color is red. And the scripture says in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3 and 4, Jesus died, he was buried, and he was raised from the dead according to the scriptures. And Jesus did come. He came as a little baby. He grew up as a boy. He became an adult. And when he got older, around 30 years old, he walked the earth. At 33, he went to the cross. They nailed him to the cross. They nailed his hands. They nailed his feet to the cross. They put a crown of thorns on his head. They pierced him in the side. They spit on him. They plucked his beard. They laughed at him. But Jesus didn't do anything wrong. He was shedding his blood so that can pay the price for our sins. Because that crown of thorn blood came out. When they beat him on his back, blood came out. When they pierced him in the side, blood and water came out. But that was because Jesus had never sinned. His blood was holy and sinless. God could use it to pay the price for our sins. So the next color is white, and white stands for righteousness, or clean heart, or purity. Psalms 51 verse 7 says, wash me with his soap. Wash me so I will be white as snow. And that's what Jesus Christ's blood did for us. It washed our sins away. The light of God comes in on our heart once you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The next color is green, and the Bible says in 2 Peter 3.18, it stands for growth. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. You learn more about Jesus. How do you learn about Jesus? You read the Bible, you go to church, you come to the Bible club, you pray, so you learn more about Jesus. And then the last color is gold. Revelation 21, 21 says, the streets are like transparent glass. This, that's like gold. The streets are made of gold. And those are the five colors. Darkness, Romans 3, 23. Red is for the blood of Jesus. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3 and 4, white righteousness, the light of God comes in and shines in our heart. Psalm 51, verse 7, green growth, you grow, 2 Peter 3, 18, and the last color is gold. Revelation 21, the streets of heaven are paved in gold. So what, once you see and hear all of those colors and what they represent, do you think someone just automatically become a child of God? God loves everybody. He created everybody. But guess what? In order to be a part of his family, you have to receive the free gift of salvation, which is why Jesus came. God says, you receive my son, Jesus Christ, and you can go to heaven. You'll be a part of my family. Romans 10, 9 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So if you believe Jesus came and he paid the price for your sin. He was your substitute and you receive him as your, you want to receive him as your savior. Let's pray this prayer. Pray with me. You say what I say. Say, dear Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. Thank you for shedding your holy sinless blood for me. I receive you now as my savior. I'm sorry for my sins. I believe that you died, you were buried, and on the third day, God raised you from the dead. Jesus, thank you for being my savior. I receive you in Jesus' name. And amen. And if you said that prayer and you really believed it in your heart that Jesus paid the price for your sin, the Bible says you are saved and you get to be a part of God's family. And if you said that prayer, 
If this is your first time saying that prayer, let us know about it. And we will send you some something to read to help you grow in your relationship with God. Awesome! Yeah! We're so proud!